Stuck in my head for days. Da, 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 da. I'm starting my day off by saying hi to Gertie right there who serves ice cream usually. But today we're here for a very special reservation, one that I had to make weeks ago in order to get it, the 50s Primetime Dine-In Restaurant. Cafe, 50s Primetime Cafe. All checked in now, just waiting for that text message to say that we can go inside. I'm super excited about this. Uh, as a side note, Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater has zero reservations for weeks, at least as that I can see. The key is to just keep looking. See if anything opens up later. The music for those very cool Disney Junior cavalcades gets stuck in your head really, really quick. But I've noticed that the music is really loud in some places and you can't hear it at all, at all in other places. Actually, that's intended, that's the idea. So you walk in, so, oh wait, here we go. See how it's like, it turns up as it makes its way around here. It's because it follows that cavalcade. It's gonna be stuck in my head for days. Da, 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 da. Just waving to Fancy Nancy as we're making our way in. Table's ready. Sounds good. Right this way. Thank you, thank you. Made it into 50s prime time cafe. Super excited to try something new, something new on the menu. I'm a huge fan of the fried chicken. I, it's gonna be tough for me to, to try something new from that, we'll see. Okay, you know how much I love this restaurant. Last time, I think we had the trio, and it was really, really good, but I loved that fried chicken. I wanna try it again, knowing that, you know, there's other fried chicken on my mind now that was so amazing last, you know, just a few days ago, that, that one is another one I wanna try. That being said, they've got some amazing sounding appetizers too. The onion rings, crab cake, Wow. Non-specialty beverage here, Mickey's Bebop drink. Delicious cherry flavored Sprite with dad's glowing electric ice cubes served in a souvenir cup. On the menu, they also have that peanut butter and jelly milkshake. That's gonna be very tough for me to resist because it's been, I don't know how many years. I have no idea how many years since we've tried it and I've been really craving it. Uncle Tim asked me what color the soap was. I said, I used hand sanitizer, it's clear. He's like, no, no. I decided to go with that fried chicken. Huge, huge fan of it. I wanna like directly compare it, like a few days away from other amazing fried chicken that we've had. Without a doubt, the fastest service I've ever experienced at Disney. Not only do I have a milkshake, I've also got that delicious looking Aunt Liz's Golden Fried Chicken. I remember this being some of the best fried chicken around. I am so, so excited to dig in. We've also got the peanut butter and jelly milkshake. You know, I'm, uh, I'm just looking forward to it. It's been a long time, long, long time. Let's dig in. You can see the peanut butter and jelly milkshake just comes in the uh, metal container right there. We've got straws as well, but chicken first. I keep sanitizing over and over and over again. Fried chicken here at 50's Prime Time. Super, super good. Big fan of it. It's a very different chicken than the chicken we find at Olivia's and other places. It's fried chicken versus, you know, just like a piece of chicken that has been fried. In terms of fried chicken, I absolutely love it. Meatloaf is great too. It really is. I have to come back again for that one too, but really good. The spices aren't quite as intense as I remember. So I remember being a little bit more, you know, with those spices and different flavors to it. A little bit, a little bit blander, just a tiny bit, I would still get it again. Prior to coming in, I might say to myself, I'll go out of my way for this fried chicken. Now I'm gonna say to myself, I'll probably get it again, but wouldn't go out of my way for it. So that's how, how I judge it now. Now for the item that I know we're both, you know, primarily interested in, right? The peanut butter and jelly milkshake from 50s prime time. Cheers. It's impossible to drink out of the straw. It is, but I remember that flavor. So, so good. Peanut butter and jelly, delicious. When you first get it, let it, uh, let it thaw just a little bit. You can, eat, you know, eat it with the, the spoon, but you gotta take a little while before we can get it with the straw. The chicken comes with corn and mashed potatoes, both fantastic. The corn is like super buttery, like super, super buttery. Deliciousness. I gotta be honest with you, my favorite part of the meal, peanut butter and jelly milkshake. <laughs> All right, how many people knew that that was gonna happen? I'm <laughs> That's what happens. So, you know, Olivia's is still my number one for that chicken. Unbelievable chicken. This is great too. Completely different chicken though. This is fried chicken versus, you know, something like that. So it's important to make that mental note. I'm gonna finish this up now. I'm gonna be on our way. They've actually uh, made this such a quick process because the food got here so quickly. Uncle Tim just called me Mr. Elbows because I had an elbow on a table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 50s is about the experience quite a bit. I feel like the flavor is enhanced. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that. The server came by and she's like, what are you talking to? It's so funny. Long story short, let it melt just a little bit. 
flavors enhanced even more. Now you may be saying to yourself, Michael, I thought you were gonna be good. What's with these milkshakes and dining experiences? Okay, this is me being good. <laughs> if I wasn't being good, I might take a milkshake to go. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But I'm, I'm, I'm spacing them out. I'm spacing them out because I do want to kind of follow along with you know my, my original plans to space them out. So probably this and then no other dining experiences later. That, that's my, my way of thinking about it. I've learned my lesson before. I never leave vegetables on these plates. I mean, I don't leave them anyway, but and no, it's my second paper straw <laughs> milkshake here. Uh, we need a new solution. We still do. I have to admit there's not much left in this milkshake, but it's definitely good enough to take it to go. On for more Hollywood Studios fun. Now the exit for 50's primetime is through the tune-in lounge, which is attached to it, through this walkway right here. But I want you to take a look at the tune-in lounge. There are no tables, there are no chairs, there are no seating areas at all in here. It's just meant to use, you know, be work as a pass-through, and this is where alcoholic beverages are uh, kind of gotten from when you order it at the table. So I've never seen it without any chairs before. Finishing up that milkshake now. The milkshake, again, was the best part. Next time, we're gonna try the meatloaf or some of those appetizers for sure. Now I'm thinking about making my way back to Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. It's been a little while since we've been on it, and I'm thinking to myself, I saw it as a 40 minute wait. I wanna see if that's accurate. Looking at the line from here, it looks like 40 minutes to me. Let's actually make our way towards Toy Story Land. Now, as we make our way into Toy Story Land today, I thought it'd be a great day to kind of do a deeper dive. Look at some more of those details all around Toy Story Land, not just talking about the attractions and the different things to see and do. Well, we got on those too. I'm saying like smaller details. Let's dive in. As you first enter into Toy Story Land, you'll see Woody there with the photo pass photographer standing by to take your picture. He has a few different catchphrases and he'll tell you as you make your way in. I've always truly admired how Disney puts those speakers in the very, very interesting places. Take a look up above. That is a speaker grill right there for that amazing Toy Story Land music. Scattered throughout Toy Story Land, you'll find different blocks and figures. There's a green army man telling you that safety is in that direction, or he's watching out for us, one of the two. And you can actually see blocks that he's standing on from the uh, taller grass, kind of as a, as a toy. This is how tall the grass would be with the uh, toy sitting in it. Slinky Dog Dash is a ton of fun in Toy Story Land. It goes all the way around and around. It's got two launches. We've been on it several times and I love it each and every time. But Rex has some pretty cool sayings. Oh, I miss Slinky Dog, but slow down. He's making me dizzy. Throughout the year, they're holding up those very special lights. Rex is holding them and Jesse's kind of making sure that he, she balances Rex out there. Great to kind of fly around around them during the holidays, Rex will actually have a set of e antlers on. As we make our way deeper into Toy Story Land and see Slinkies slinking by, I like that, is these toys. Look at this toy car right here. It's actually a souvenir shop. It's closed at the moment, but look at that theming. It's not just the, the wheels below where they're red, it's the toys inside that vehicle. You'll see those lights that Jesse and Rex were holding actually followed their way all the way around Toy Story Land. And they make for a great photo, especially at night, because they do indeed light up. I do want to note the stroller parking next to the entrance of Toy Story Midway Mania, and it is indeed one of the best attractions at Walt Disney World. I cannot deny that. One of the fan favorite photo spots inside of Toy Story Land is right by the Pixar Ball. You can find it between the exit of Toy Story Midway Mania and the entry slash exit it of Woody's Lunchbox. Once things like Woody's Lunchbox are open back up in the future, we will do a more thorough walkthrough of all those different things, including these stores. Look at this camper, the family camper vehicle. Again, one of those stores there. It's meant to be, you know, for gifts, but it's closed at the moment. So when they open back up, we'll take an even deeper dive. Seeing Slinky without being on Slinky is the, one of the easiest things to do around here. You can see Slinky from just about every part of Toy Story Land, but you get unique views as you walk towards the entrance. Whether it's the Slinky launch and and uh, making its way towards the second launch or towards the end at the end of the ride there. Or that second launch, there is a ton that you can see from this bridge as you make your way towards Slinky Dog Dash. I always love this second launch. Launch, woo! There they go. There are a few details I wanna show you in the standby line of Slinky Dog Dash. Maybe not right this moment, but in a little bit, there are a few of those details in there that I wanna show you, but look at these views. You can catch some amazing photos. If you love that photography, wanna catch Slinky Dog, or maybe before that second launch, look at this shot right here, just imagine that. It's located by the exit slash entrance of Slinky Dog Dash. You can walk over here anytime. The benches in Toy Story Land are made of either popsicle sticks, like you can see on the left-hand side, 
or Domino's, which you can see on the right. Inside Woody's lunchbox, they also have the cheese that you can sit on. That's cool. The popsicle sticks do have that back support. The Domino's are just kind of a small spot to sit down. Have you seen these large footprints on the ground before? Those are Andy's feet walking through. He was here earlier, but we're the size of a toy, so they're huge shoes to us. The entrance to Alien Swirling Saucers is protected by these pizza men over here. We remember them from Pizza Overlord, I believe that's the name of it, and you've got Buzz Lightyear up above who speaks every now and again. Once every part of Toy Story Land is open again in the future, we'll do a much deeper dive. I've got plans to do deeper dives of all of these different locations all around Disney because I know I've heard from your comments. I heard, I heard you. You said, Michael, we love seeing those deeper dives. More of those details. Delighted to bring it to you. Let's see if I can pass by undetected. Just shh, don't, don't, say don't say anything. Stay out of trouble. I'll try. Okay. Again. Oh my god. Oh god. I didn't, I didn't stay out of trouble. I'm, I'm leaving. We know what you're doing. Oh man. Oh, oh, man. I gotta run. I gotta move fast. Oh, oh my god. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I think the stormtrooper actually could figure out what I was trying to do. <laughs> I was going like this. It was like, oh, don't, you know, don't, don't do anything. He was like, he immediately saw the camera. He was like, oh, I'm looking at you. Walking into Docking Bay 7 here to grab some water. Take a look at this. It looks almost like a, um, a crab trap. Like, you, you know, you put it in the water and the crabs crawl in and you capture the crab. I don't know. Maybe it, you know, I think it's seeing a lot of little things for the future, too. Here in line for Tower of Terror, you can see it's terrific. See it? Ter terrific up there. In the queue line now for Tower of Terror, and you can see this very scary statue. She's not that scary. She's not that scary, but she's out there, and we can see her. And look at the uh, building behind her. So cool. Where the birds sing words and the flowers croon in the tiki 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 tiki. No, no. Here we go. Ah! 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 Oh my god. Oh! 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 So, so intense. No hands. No hands at all. It's just free fall. We fell like four or five times. It's super, super intense. Now, as you can hear, I am super dehydrated. I think it's a big Trento water from Starbucks. I think it was that milkshake that probably dehydrated me just a bit. You know, I feel like I drank something, it's super sweet. I say to myself, oh, that's good enough, but I don't have enough water with it. That is a Trento water. Usually I get the venti water, but you can tell already. I, I, I need water. It's we all need water, but why do I forget so often? I have no idea. I don't know why I forget so often. It just, it keeps happening. I keep forgetting, but it's its becoming less frequent, right? And, and more, you know, I'm remembering a little bit better. <laughs> it just takes me a long time to remember, you know, to create a habit. It takes a while to create a habit. Now, over the past few years, I've been working on my photography and, of course, videography skills, but photography is the thing I'm thinking about in this moment. Now, many friends have asked me the big camera question, what is the best camera for me? I do not use many cameras. I use the GoPro. I use the 90D shooting on right now. I use my iPhone. That's about it. Now, the reason I bring this up today is because a very kind cast member came over to me and he said, you know, I have this camera, I love it, what do you recommend, what are you using, and I'm more than happy to answer those questions, absolutely. But the reason I'm telling you, I, I you know, it's 90D, not the most expensive camera, uh, iPhone and GoPro. That's, I have my drone too, I love the drone. Um, but that's about it when it comes to photography. I personally believe that the best photos are taken from experience. As an example, if a professional nature photographer who has been shooting photographs for 30 years came to the Magic Kingdom with a small iPhone and I was given a $10,000 camera with the best lens money can buy, who do you think would take better photos? Let me tell you who would. The photographer with 30 years experience, he or she would know the best angles, understand lighting in a whole new way. So the reason I'm telling you this is because it comes down to experience. You wanna take great photos wherever you are. Practice, practice, practice. That's how I did it. That's how a lot of people do it. Of course, you can learn from others. Please, don't hesitate. Look at other photos, get ideas, get inspired by others who take photos, other photos that you see, wherever it is, and then think with that creativity. Finished off that water, feeling fantastic. Now I'm gonna make my way to Toy Story Midway Mania, try and get that best score of this month, or at least try for it, and then uh, definitely Mickey and Minnie's. We're gonna get some more done. We've got a little under 50 minutes to do it. Let's do it. We're making our way, and I'm seeing the Incredibles making their way down. Music transition. That's like that. 
da, 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 da. Less than an hour of park time left, and this seems to be a common occurrence around just about every park. You know, you got uh, far fewer people. I am so excited for Soul. That's a movie that has been inspiring me just with the commercials, just with the previews for it. That's one that I think is gonna be a new, like, hit. I don't know, we'll see. It's impossible to know, but. Soul, yeah, looking forward to that one. I think the reason is because the message is all about, you know, doing what you're passionate about. That, you know, what we do here every single day. And this, I, this is, I'm so passionate about this. I love it. Every, it's each and every day. So for me, it speaks to me in so many ways. Using my left arm to hold you up here because I'm resting my right arm. I want to be 100% ready to get maybe best score ever for me. Let, let's be my own personal best. My arm is exhausted, but let's see how we did. 186,100. More practice. Not bad, more practice. Best this hour is 287,500. I got 286,100. So close. There's literally no one standing to get into Toy Story Midway Mania right now, so maybe we can go again. Sure enough, it's no problem because there is literally no one. There's, there's no, people just arrived right now. There's no one waiting. So intense that my arms are doubly tired now. Let's see how we did. 302,000, very, very good. Not our best ever, our best is like 330. Well, very, very good. Best this hour, 302,000 right there, yeah. It's amazing, thanks to the cast members for letting us go again. Line's starting to form just a little bit now. I guess it's uh, closer to the very, very end of the evening here, but maybe that was just a quick, uh, small amount of people. 7.34 right now. Let's head over to Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. I love Toy Story Midway Mania. It's one of the best, it really is. The time is now 7.37. The park closes in 23 minutes. Question, 10 minute wait for Slinky Dog. Could we go on Slinky Dog and then have enough time to get in line for Mickey Minnie's? Hypothetically, yes, yes, it makes sense. But sometimes, you know, there's like a slowdown or something like that. You don't know, you never know. So I'm gonna try it. We're, we're gonna try it. See if we can do both in 23 minutes. 7.39 now, it says 10 minutes. Should be fine. Cross your fingers. One of the things I wanted to show you was the address on the back of that uh, dog tag right there. It says Buster and 234 Elm Street behind the time. The, the 10 minute timer for slinging it. It's so cool to see. Oh my gosh. Ha. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's a long way down. Ah. <laughs> Count it down with me. Three, two, Here we one, four. Oh, whoa. Woo. Whoa. Love that view. Whoa. That was great. I've got time to get situated, get some hand sanitizer. No rush at all. Now, several friends have brought to my attention the idea that lower crowds make for a magical experience in a, in a different way. We spoke about it the other day, and I, I agree in many ways. This is unique. It's unique. Not common, but it's it's something that we kind of are a part of together. It's almost a part of history in a way, right? The issue is, if we say to ourselves, "Oh, I wish it was like this low crowds all the time," then it wouldn't grow at the you know the level that we saw it grow prior to all this happening, right? So the Epcot updates and new lands and new rides that is inspired because of the higher crowd. So we have different thoughts about that. Yes, we love having the parks to ourselves, but at the same time, having more people makes for more growth. So yeah, it's a, it's a both ways kind of situation. Look at that time, 7.50. I'm walking calmly, calmly walking. It says it's a 30 minute wait when you're outside, right over here, see where we are? We've got row one, we're gonna see Engineer Goofy right in front of us, yay! Bum, 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 my favorite son. There's Chuby up there, Chuby's actually hiding. Can you see him? Oh, it's so cool. Can you hear me? Right back in the back? Sure can, but I'm in front. Welcome aboard, folks. Woo! Are you ready for a relaxing ride around the park? No, I want adventure. Come on, Goofy. Oh, sure. I'm Mickey, Vinny. Da 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 da. Whoa. Bumper cars sold out over here. Ah, oh, I love this. Oh, no. Donald, Donald. Now I love being like the third car back here because you can see a little bit more of this ocean scene that I love. First we got the torpedo with uh, Pluto. Go Pluto, go. Oh, there's the squid playing the uh, uh, trumpet. Love that. I never noticed the uh, barber back there. Oh my God. I can see you right there. Hi. Kanga. Yeah, oh my God. Oh, Look at the furnace over there. It's looking kind of scary. Oh no. Oh my gosh! Carousel and all. The transition here is the best. 
really is. Nothing can stop us now. Mickey fireworks. Yeah, they're shaped like Mickey. I think I have noticed that before, but I'm not sure I got a chance to point them out to you before. I love Chuby's dance. Chuby dances a little bit if you're sitting here for a few moments. You know, I've been taking the last few minutes to really admire this amazing sign. Let's uh, take a closer look. The sign itself consists of this amazing neon. You can see it kind of goes between those two hands for Minnie as she's waving at us. The pink for Runaway Railway really stands out against the night sky. You can see it from all the way at the back of the road here, Hollywood Boulevard. The colors on Mickey are fantastic. The red for his pants, the yellow for his shoes and buttons, and he's waving right at us. See how the Mickey and Minnie's flash with this uh, yellow? It actually seems to cycle. See how it kind of moves in a direction almost? Mickey and Minnie's as it uh, makes its way along there. The yellow goes so well with the green surrounding it. The area up above is meant to grab your attention and it definitely does. I get a great movie ride feel from the yellow and pink kind of at the end there. I hope I'm not uh, bothering anyone's eyesight by getting too close to that one. But you get the idea that area where you kind of used to go through the great movie ride. It was like yellow and pink just like that. Reminds me of it so much. It's hard to imagine that a year before I was born, Jim Henson and Kermit the Frog put their hands right here at... Wait a minute, <laughs> this feels like a perfect fit. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Does that not look like a perfect fit to you? Wait a second. Are you not, wait, wait a second. I've always been a huge fan of Jim Henson and this, uh, this handprint is almost the exact same size as mine. It, the pinky on the left hand is a tiny bit bigger, but from what I can see, I'm, I want you to look at that. And that, that, that's so cool. That's something I did not know. Jim Henson and I have almost the exact same hand. Good night, Mickey and Minnie. See you soon. Just walked by the store until they have Halloween merch over there. This is great. They have it not only at the Magic Kingdom and Disney Springs, but also at Hollywood Studios. The same merch we saw before, whether it's the bag, the pillow, the trick-or-treat light-up one right there. They got the light-up pumpkin and the light-up bag there. We've also got Rice Krispie treats, popcorn, and more. Mickey and Minnie has those plushes. We've got the shirts over here, the sweatshirts, the spirit jersey. That one looks new. Take a look at it there. It says Walt Disney World. And you can see that pumpkin in in the middle of the D there. That is a great spirit jersey. I can see the price, $54.99. We've also got these all black Mickey headbands and then look over here. We've got these amazing Disney villain throws. Those are great. See Hades right there? Amazing. And that is $39.99. There's Maleficent right there. It's a mug. You can tell by looking at the side over here. You see the little kind of green in the back there. It's the handle for her and her, her horns actually come off. Now these are photo frames. Super cool to see. I would imagine you have that uh, kind of darker effect if you put your photo behind there as well. So you'll almost look like that kind of shadow, shadow and darkness back there. I love this hat. Just one bite. Just That's all it takes. Just one bite of the poison apple. I think that's going to be popular. I'm telling you. Take a look at the awesome Haunted Mansion purse or uh, card holder there. See Haunted Mansion. I move a little bit. You can see that you got the hitchhiking ghosts just like that. And it kind of closes over to uh, protect your credit cards there. So cool. I think it's about $15 for that. One. Now we saw this bag at Memento Mori right by the Haunted Mansion and the Magic Kingdom, but look at these socks. These are so cool. Evil and villainous and devious and all sorts of different phrases that I can't read because they're just partially covered up there, but those socks are awesome. I Oh, I think these are a hit, Disney. Take a look at these lanterns. Fantastic. There's Dr. Facilier and his friends on the other side. Over here, you've got the evil queen of it, and on the other side of it, which we can see from here, you got Maleficent. If you look inside, it's actually the electronic light. So you just kind of flip a switch on the bottom, I would imagine, and they turn on. Look at that Walt Disney World Halloween sequined Mickey bag, $24.99. That is awesome. It's a shoulder bag and a larger version. Great one. Now, I'm not sure if this droid was out and about before Halloween, but he's here in the Halloween section. He's got those green and orange colors to him. Perfect for this time of year. The Nightmare Before Christmas section here is well stocked. We've got Zero. We've seen him before, kind of the, uh, the dog on the leash right there and then up above. Zero is my hero. Kids sweatshirt, $39.99. Below it, glow in the dark, moody shirt for a young one. Below that, we've got Little Nightmare for the littlest in your traveling party, $19.99. I can see that price. And then over here, another Jack Skellington. Almost looks like Prisoner Jack Skellington, $24.99. Now, while I was standing here, some customers brought up some more merchandise. Lounge slide bags right there, added by the cast members. So, so cool. I have a feeling these are going to be super, super popular. All right, I'm on my way out. I left 
really fast because I didn't want to keep any of the cast members waiting. They told me I could take as long as I wanted, but I really didn't want to keep anyone waiting. Found it all right in here. So cool, so, so cool. I am not the last guest out. There are more behind me. Such a great day. Good night, Hollywood Studios. Thanks so much for sharing in the magic with me today. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Until next time, have a magical day. Thank you.